in that position, especially in the NFL. Uh, it, it is an interesting dynamic. We'll say that we don't, you know, yes, we've seen Sean McVay uh, have success, but a lot of young coaches in this league don't because of that very thing. And what happens when, you know, times are tight and things are struggling and can, can he be the guy uh, that, that commands the room? Maybe, uh, maybe you're onto something there, Jim. Maybe this is just a house of cards waiting to collapse. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm not even going to, I'm not projecting so much. I'm just observing. And yeah. you know, LaFleur is 39, very highly thought of. And again, he, they have been a very good offensive team. They have really exposed opposing defenses that can't cover running backs. Uh, you know, Aaron Jones and I mean, their, their running backs are always open, you know, running yes. routes. And that, that, and that's a little reflective of what Sean McVay does as well, because when Gurley was healthy, he was just as dangerous as a receiver, as a running back. So I'm, I'm not really knocking them. I'm just saying the dynamic looks and feels weird because McVay is very young, but there's no doubt who's in charge. There's no doubt that he is a commanding right. figure in his own right. way. LaFleur, I haven't gotten that impression. And like I said, it, when you're, that's the great thing about winning is winning covers up all those problems. I don't know if they have a conflict or if they have a rough stretch and Rodgers says, we're going to do A, whether LaFleur is going to be the guy, kind of guy who can say, no, we're doing B, I'm, I'm in charge here. Right. Yeah, that, that, that is going to be one of the, the crucial parts of their relationship is can he exert that authority? Now, um, the luxury that he has that even Sean McVay doesn't have uh, is that Rodgers is just one of the you know, lifetime talents that we've had at that position and has such a grasp of what needs to be done that maybe you don't need that part of it as much. I mean, I, like everyone kind of seems to think that McVeigh is the puppet master for Jared Goff and just, hey, you throw here on this play and do this and do that. Um, but, uh, you know, the floor doesn't do that with Aaron Rodgers and doesn't have to. Now, there's been some debate about whether Aaron Rodgers exerts too much influence sometimes. But I think whenever you have someone that talented um, with that much of a command of things, uh, it, it certainly makes your job, it should make your job easier as long as you have, as long as you don't have enough ego to say, no, 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 I know what's right, you're wrong, and, and try and take this over. It should be a pretty fruit, fruitful relationship with the two of them. Let's finish up with a quick talk about J. Ron Curse. I uh, do want to thank Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Promo code is Talk North. That will get you one delivery fee waived. After that, check out BiteSquad.com for the deals they have in your area, the restaurants that can serve you in your area, and their members only deal $5.99 for a free delivery within any place within four miles. Uh, they keep adding good restaurants. It's great service. Morning, noon, night, snack time, home office, elsewhere, BiteSquad.com. BiteSquad, the app, is the, probably the easiest way to use their services. So, Jaron Curse gets busted, DUI, and weapons charge. And I, I'll admit, I used to be much more of a hawk in these situations. I used to be harder on athletes who get busted for doing stupid things. But, you know, I guess, I don't know whether it's with age or with an attempt at wisdom. You know, I what I, I kind of came to a realization at some point, you know, if you punish a player, if you suspend a player, if you cut a player for doing something stupid or irresponsible off the field, in some ways, you're really punishing the team, you know. Because, you now, if you find the player, like as, and I'll take the the Vikings example, Diggs basically went AWOL on this team, and if they had suspended him, if they benched him, then they probably might have blown up their entire season, and that would have punished everybody in the franchise. Instead, they just find the heck out of Diggs. He came back in the fold, and now he's helping them win games. I I can't condone anything what Curse did. I think he should be punished, but do you? cut somebody like this? Do you suspend them? Do you bench them? Or, or do you just find them and, and deal with it in the off season? Well, I mean, I, I, I think it's varying degrees, um, of, of transgression, uh, to, to make a decision on how far you go with any kind of punishment or disciplinary action. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't on its face believe that a DUI is grounds for dismissal from a team. Um, 
I think it's something that you talk to him about and yeah, you may find him and, and you, if he needs help, you get him help. But, uh, that alone, I don't think is, is reason to let him go. Um, the weapons charge. Yeah, that is certainly a mistake or, uh, um, a, uh, a, a blunder on his part and, and, and really careless and reckless. Um, it, if there's any indication that, you know, there was any sort of intent to harm anyone or anything like that with, with, with that kind of scenario, then yes, that, that turns into an entirely different. Yep, ball that's the line. That, that's yep. the line where I draw the lines. If you're, you know, if we're talking about violence against violence yeah. against somebody else, that's a different yeah. category. Yep. And so, and so who knows, like, I don't know the, the context behind that and, and what uh, the reason was he was carrying around a loaded gun. Um, but I would uh, hope and I would expect that the Vikings are going to investigate that very closely to try and come to the right conclusions on on what was happening. I mean, uh, did he just take it to a gun range and shoot and then, um, you know, uh, it, 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 and, and have it in the car when he shouldn't have, when it should have been in the trunk or something like that or unloaded? Uh, forgot to unload it or something with something fairly innocent or was it something more menacing if you know you got to find you got to try and find out what what the circumstances were behind that and then try and make your decision on it so um but yeah if, if they do find that there was some sort of ill intent there then yeah i think that opens the door to a lot more severe punishments than if there was some relatively understandable explanation for why he was in that situation. One more note on the Packers, one impressive aspect of what they've done so far. I know Viking fans hate to hear this, but I, we were in the reality business. We're going to talk about this stuff. Packers have beaten uh, two teams that came off buys, the Lions and the Raiders, and one coming off kind of a Thursday night mini buy in the Chiefs. So, that, that's usually a pretty good sign of coaching expertise is when you can either take advantage of your arrest or, yeah. or overcome other teams having that advantage. For sure. And, and look, it, you know, Mike McCarthy had a great run there, but it may have just sort of gotten stale. And, and I think everyone really did look at that as a, a time to move on and a time to get some new blood and some fresh uh, outlook on things in there. And I think that it's benefited them. Um, Sometimes change is good, not, you know, just for change's sake. Um, and, and, and so they have, yes, they've, they've come in with good game plans. You know, Mike Pettin, the, the defensive coordinator has done a really good job of, of getting that, that unit more up to par with the offense after years of it being really imbalanced. And, and so, um, you know, when you look at those things that, that definitely plays in the Packers favor, down the stretch here is Joe you know, trying to have a coaching staff that is able to s- strategize an X and O and, 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 and hit the right chords in those situations. Um, they seem to have found something for right now. So we'll see how that holds up. The great thing is that the Vikings Packers rivalry is the defining rivalry in Minnesota sports. And we have a, what could be a great race down the stretch with a Packers at Vikings game in December at us bank stadium. It's going to be a blast. No question. I mean, this is what you want, you know, talk, you know, getting back to our conversation about how, you know, the twins had a hundred hundred win season and how enjoyable that was like just having, having the Vikings in it, getting people's hopes up. And I know people are, some of people are bracing for the gut punch, but uh, having some of that belief start to trickle in. And then, you know, knowing that your chief rival is also really, really good. Um, that to me is the best case scenario. You know, I know that Vikings fans would love it if the Packers were 0 16 every year and the Vikings just, you know, beat them 35 to nothing. But uh, I, I like it when it's close, man. I, I like to have you know, a lot riding on every single game, on every single snap. And it sure is shaping up to be a second half of the season where that's going to be the case. And so it should be really entertaining it should be probably nerve-wracking for some for some vikings fans but you know that's how you know you're alive is when you have some goosebumps that stand up on your on your arm and when you have some nausea that 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 uh that 
sneaks into your stomach uh, in the in the fourth quarter of these games. Thanks to our producer, Brandon Morton. Again, check out TwillMN.com or Twill Edina on Instagram. Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin, and Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Promo code TALKNORTH. We'll be back next week after the Vikings play in Kansas City. It's going to be fun.